What's up everybody, David here, and as I'm sure you've probably already noticed, Studio One version 4 was announced and released this week, which is crazy exciting. But today I just kind of wanted to take you through version 4 and show you some things I like, things I dislike, just kind of give my first impressions and thoughts after using it. I've been using it for about three or four days now and just kind of wanted to let you guys know what I think. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to attack right off the bat is the UI. So the UI isn't going to be crazy different. They didn't reinvent the wheel here, but they definitely did polish it up. One thing that definitely sticks out to me first is the mixer. So the mixer used to have the mute and solo record on the right next to the fader. I found that to be kind of cluttered and now they've moved it above the fader and it just looks a lot cleaner to me. The values for the meter are now on the side, which once again just looks a lot cleaner, a lot easier to monitor your values. And then they've added a couple buttons when you're not showing the sends and the inserts. So normally you would just have to double click to open up sends and inserts. Now there's this little button you can just click and it toggles on and off to see all the inserts and stuff. And that's just really simple. You have a dedicated button just for the channel editor. And then also all the mute solo record throughout the whole program just looks a lot more 3D and just polished. And they did it with all the menus as well. So all the menus are just a cleaner, more polished 3D type of look. And I don't know, it just, I feel like it looks a lot better. It's not crazy different. It is very subtle, but it does look very good. And now we have more color options. So you can now make Studio One fully white with black text, which is really cool for people who I've heard are maybe colorblind or having astigmatism. So that can be really useful. I'm actually gonna switch this to white because I think it looks cool. Although I'll probably switch it back in like a day because I usually like the dark themes, but I'm gonna switch it up for now. So UI wise, it's like I said, it's not a crazy difference, but the changes are nice, they are definitely welcome, and I think it looks a lot better. Next we have the chord track and harmonic editing. So I'm gonna be really honest with you, I've not used these yet. Um, this is something I have never used before, but from what I understand, it allows you to kind of change and edit and try out new chord progressions. Um, the harmonic editing will actually change the chord that's being played, so that allows you to try out new progressions and work on harmonies and things like that. That is really exciting. I have not used it yet, but I'm very excited to do so. From what I understand, that's a feature from Cubase that a lot of people wanted, and now we have in Studio One, so that's also very exciting. Next was a highly requested feature, and that is channel notes. So a lot of the time when you're miking up a cab, for example, you have two different mics. You have a 57 and a condenser or something else. Sometimes I want to put in the channels how it was miked, where it was miked, and just kind of keep track of what I did there, which is where channel notes come in handy. So now, on the settings icon next to the mixer, you can show channel notes, and it gives you this little area above each or below each channel that allows you to type in whatever you want. So you can just type in the mic that you use to record, and then whenever you're done, you can hide that channel note or show it whenever you want. And it's just a really handy way to keep track of what you did, how you did it, and uh, just making sure you don't forget stuff. So that's really exciting. I know a lot of people wanted that. It was a very simple feature, so I'm glad that they put that in this version. Next we have AAF import and export, which is a really cool file type because it allows you to import and export your project exactly how you see it in your edit window. So for example, I've already exported another song as an AAF file, and we're just gonna import it and see what it does. So we're gonna go to open, desktop, AAF, and now you'll see that it imported all the audio files exactly how it was in the previous project. All the cuts are still there, all the fades are still there. It's not importing it like from the zero mark like everything else where you have a bunch of blank space. Um, and it's just really convenient because I usually cut all this out anyways. So now if I import a session, um, I don't have to do any cuts. Everything is exactly how I left it in the other session. And it's just really convenient, especially when working between multiple DAWs. So you can export this AAF from Pro Tools and then import it in Studio One and it will look exactly the same. So I will probably be including the AAF file in all the multi-tracks I release on my channel too. So that's really exciting and it should make it a lot easier for you guys when importing your tracks because everything is already named. So it's just that much easier and that much quicker. Next we have session import and export. So this is basically a way for you to import your settings from another session or a song file into your current file. So let's say you're mixing an album and it has five tracks on it or 10 tracks or whatever. You can mix one track, get the mix you like, and then import that mix session, those mix settings onto the other track so that you don't have to create uh, maybe like a, a track preset or something and go one by one and reset everything up. And it's just a lot easier. So for example, 
If I wanted to import the session data from another song, you go to Song, Import Song Data, and then go to your songs and just select the song you want. So we'll say this Attila project. So you can choose exactly what you want to transfer over, which is really convenient for mixing multiple songs because then you could just copy the basic settings and then tweak it from there to fit that song. So it's gonna save you a lot of time. This was also another highly requested feature uh, for PreSonus to put in Studio One, so I'm very glad they did this as well. Next thing we have that is, I believe, new, I don't think this was in version three, but if you hover over this button right here, this is actually ripple editing. So ripple editing is a type of editing that kind of adapts to you, it does the heavy lifting for you, when you're switching around arrangements and deleting parts, uh, et cetera. So for example, let's say I wanted to delete this whole section of a song. I want this verse to be half as long. So I'm gonna select this whole entire section and hit delete. Without ripple editing, you now have a blank space and you have to go back and select all this and move it over. With ripple editing, watch this. Turn that on, hit delete. It automatically moved over that next section for me. I don't have to go in and do anything. It's automatically compensated for the changes that I've just made. This is really cool to see. I use this a lot in Sonar. I was kind of bummed that Studio One didn't have it, but now we do, so thank you, PreSonus. That is awesome. And then, of course, I have to mention one of the most exciting things, and that is the drum editor. So now, when you're editing drums, instead of using the piano roll, you have a dedicated drum editor that uses these little triangles, similar to what Cubase does, and it's so much easier to work on drums now. One thing that I wanted from Cubase, because I demoed Cubase before Studio One, and one thing Cubase had that I loved that Studio One did not is the drum editor. So the coolest thing about using a drum editor like this is that let's say you just want to automate the kick settings. Just click on the kick and it will only show you the kick drums down in the automation window. Click on the snare, it will only show you the snares. So it's so much easier to really dial in your drums, automate them, humanize them, uh, when you can only see the drum you want to work on. That is awesome. Especially if you're working on something like a snare roll that has kicks under it. Now you could just hit the snare, work on the snare, just hit the kick, work on the kick, and it's just so much simpler. Naming the drums is really simple. You just click on the gear right here, and then you can double click and name them whatever you want and just stay organized. And it shows you this little dot where drums are being played. So where there's no dots, that means no MIDI notes are being played. So it's really simple to name the ones you need to name, get in, get out, and you're good to go. And then there's also an option to show all or hide all the unused ones. So obviously I'm only using these maybe 15 tracks right here, so I don't need to see all of these blank MIDI notes. If I click on this little paper right here, hide unused, it only shows me the ones that are being used. Again, simplifying the entire process. So another really cool thing they've added is a pattern editor. So if I go to a MIDI track here and go to event, insert pattern, it's gonna insert the ability to use a pattern editor like for, I guess this is like for like electronic type music. Um, I don't really know that I'll use this very much. I'm definitely gonna try it, but I don't work with a lot of that type of music, so I don't know how much I'll get use out of it, but I mean, it's cool to see nonetheless. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna love this. And then the last thing I think is really cool, which this is not something that's in Studio One yet, but they announced that we're going to get Aura 2 in Studio One version four. They've been working with uh, whoever makes the Aura software, but it will be coming to Studio One 4. The groundwork is there, so whenever that gets rolled out, uh, it's gonna be integrated with Melodyne and then with the chord track, so that's really exciting. We're definitely gonna stay up to date on all the Aura stuff. So, I am stupid and apparently forgot to mention in that video that we also got new versions of Impact XT and Sample 1 XT. From what I saw on the live stream, those seem fantastic. They've made a ton of improvements. However, that's kind of one of those things that I once again um, kind of like the, the step sequencer or pattern editor. It's not something I really use quite often. Um, I'm definitely gonna play around with it now because I wanna check out what's new. I wanna see if it's maybe something I'm going to use from now on, but I totally forgot to mention that. That is, of course, a noteworthy feature to mention. Even though I don't use it, doesn't mean uh, a, a lot of other people might not love it, might not currently be using it. So yes, Sample One XT and Impact XT, it's also new, a lot of new stuff in there. I'm dumb and completely forgot to say that. So yeah, that's a thing. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I'm really excited about for Studio One version four. I think there's a lot of awesome features. I upgraded the day it came out. I did not waste any time. A lot of people are saying that they wish there were more features in here, that it's not as groundbreaking as they hoped it would be. 
I don't really see that. I see a lot of useful stuff here and I uh, have no regrets upgrading. It's been working flawlessly. There were no issues for me and I, I think it's money well spent. I got this for $125 from Audio Deluxe after a coupon code, so I am a happy camper. I'm sure there's much more I didn't talk about or I don't even know about, but I'm very excited to learn all those things and find them eventually when I do. But yeah, I'd say you guys should definitely upgrade to version four. It's 150 bucks, like I said, I got it for 125 through Audio Deluxe. Definitely check it out, definitely upgrade. Um, I really don't really have any complaints here. I'm very, very happy with version four. And that's what I'm gonna end it for today, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Did you upgrade, are you going to upgrade, are you gonna hold out? What are you thinking, what are your thoughts? Just let me know in the comments below. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There are new videos every single week and you don't wanna miss any content. Once again, thank you very much for watching. My name is David and I will see you guys next time.